Terry uh, because she did an incredible work. Uh, this is a good occasion finally to thank her publicly. She did an incredible uh, work uh, editing the book, uh, not to speak of the translators, of course. Um, and uh, uh, I don't think my book really deserved all this effort, so I'm <laughs> particularly grateful for this. Um, now, I would like to start uh, from um, uh, um, an episode um, I was told about uh, just a few days ago when I was uh, in Italy. Uh, this concerns a friend who, is, uh, um, who has been for a very long time an anti-racist uh, uh, activist, uh, organizing uh, the anti-racist movement in her town and uh, doing a lot of important work about this. Uh, what happened is that uh, uh, basically, more or less a year ago, uh, one of the immigrant workers she was working with uh, um, developed some form of uh, obs obsessive uh, attraction to her. And, uh, and this uh, led to an escalation of uh, stalking and harass harassment um, uh, to which she didn't know um, exactly uh, uh, which she didn't know exactly uh, how to deal with because of course the problem was that uh, denouncing this person uh, would mean uh, exposing him to the possibility of an expulsion from the country so the denial of the renewal of the visa uh, of the visa and um, the problem is that also that the, the, the left around her, with a few, with few exceptions, uh, was not really capable, so the anti-racist uh, uh, groups and so on, were, were not really capable of dealing with the situation and, were, uh, and the solution they found was actually to downplay uh, the situation, so to underestimate uh, the situation by insisting that in, in the end it was just an unwanted, passionate lover. Uh, this culminated in a, in a physical assault. Um, that forces, forced her actually to denounce uh, the person. Um, she was telling me, telling me this story a few days ago because she actually, uh, because what happened is that uh, the, this person, uh, this immigrant worker, received a notification by the police a few days ago saying that uh, his uh, visa was, uh, um, uh, was denied because of this, uh, um, of, of the denunciation of the, sex, of the physical assault and, uh, and the harassment. Uh, by uh, this anti-racist activist. Uh, now, why am I telling this story? Because I think there are three elements that one can see in this, uh, in this episode. First of all, of course, the racist instrumentalization of, uh, uh, by the police of this case of uh, assault uh, against a, 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 um, a citizen, so a, a woman. Uh, basically, the, the, the case of sexual assault was used to deny the visa and to expel um, to deport the person from the country. Uh, the second element is, uh, on, the, on the other hand, the misogyny of the police, which actually notified to this uh, immigrant worker the reason why he was, uh, he was uh, going to be deported, exposing again uh, the, this anti-racist uh, activist to further uh, um, harassment, which actually, of course, did happen. And uh, third, the uh, gender insensitiveness of the radical left around her, which was absolutely incapable, didn't have really the tools to deal with the situation, which meant basically on the one hand creating a, a network of solidarity and safety around there, while on the other hand, so denouncing and also making clear that any kind of a sexual assault was not tolerable in, in the anti-racist movement, while on the other hand rejecting any attempt by the police to uh, instrumentalize uh, this case uh, for racist purposes and, and reactionary purposes. Um, now, this kind of episode is uh, one of the reasons, uh, uh, because of course it's not the first, it's not the last one, the last one I had the experience of, uh, directly or indirectly, is one of the reasons, or the main reasons, uh, why I actually decided to write this uh, very little, uh, little book. Uh, the problem I, 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 I wanted to raise it was, uh, um, on the one hand, uh, to have a look at the history of the complicated or dangerous relationships between uh, class-based movements and, uh, and uh, gender-based movements. Um, uh, because I didn't really, uh, in my um, uh, experience as an activist, I had uh, several times experienced cases of sexism, mis misogyny, even within the organizations I was part of or in the uh, social movements and groups I, I was part of. On the, on the other hand, so I wanted to unpack this, I wanted to address this issue. On the other hand, I was not really convinced 
by the narrative according to which the history of the relationships between uh, gender-based movements or feminist movements and class-based movements or uh, Marxist-led has been just a history of uh, divorce, uh, tension and conflict. Uh, this was a narrative uh, which, that didn't convince me, also because if we look at the situation now um, and uh, the situation uh, in which we, are, we all are, uh, we are not really better off uh, now that uh, struggles and uh, movements are so fragmented and that uh, unity uh, uh, sounds uh, like a, um, very often like a, a bad word, we are not better off than uh, we were uh, 40 years ago. So basically, um, even if the, the my, my 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 viewpoint was that even if the the the, 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 the relationship has been a tense one, a complicated one, uh, a hate love relationship somehow, it is also a relationship which is in in a sense uh, necessary, vital if we want to progress in our struggle and, uh, and resist uh, against uh, neoliberal capitalism. And I think that uh, that for example the increasing use and instrumentalization of gender discourse by conserva conservative nationalist or racist forces, uh, not only in Europe, but around the world. Racist, are an, a very, an, which are issues in which uh, Sarah is doing a very important work. It, uh, it, racist are uh, really uh, extremely important problems for us uh, as feminists um, and, uh, and uh, um, emphasize the limits or what, what the dangers are of separating struggles identities uh, uh, and subjectivities, in other words, uh, separating a class struggle from gender struggle from uh, the struggle against, against racism and racial-based uh, oppressed uh, oppression. So um, with the idea that uh, basically we are uh, in a situation in which uh, um, we are in a, some, some sort of a complicated uh, love relationship, uh, which is not easy and uh, somehow creates a uh, gives some headache, but somehow it gives also meaning to our life. Uh, I try to uh, unpack a few issues. I don't have the time to go through all the theoretical debates I, I dealt with. I want to focus only um, with two elements that uh, I think are particularly important because so, um, by by looking at the history of the debate uh, and also the of the social movements and uh, and uh, uh, in the history of the workers and feminist movement, uh, what I notice is that is that there are at least uh, um, two arguments uh, that one can find uh, in uh, several. Uh, traditions. So not only this is not a, a problem that uh, belongs only to one tradition of the left, but actually we, you can find uh, throughout history the same kind of arguments repeated uh, from uh, the Stalinist uh, tradition to the anarchist tradition. Um, so there is some sort, sort of uh, um, compulsion <laughs> uh, uh, to, to repeat this kind of mantra. Um, the, the two arguments are uh, against the idea of uh, for example, the necessity for autonomous movements or movement of women are one, that uh, autonomous organizing by women is a threat to the political unity of the class. Uh, you can find this really in every kind of tradition of the left. Um, the second argument is uh, the hierarchy of, of oppressions and exploitation argument, uh, which basically uh, says, uh, of course, we recognize that there are multiple oppressions. Uh, we are not blind. There is racism, there is sexual oppression, there is uh, uh, sexism, and so on and so on. But all of this is, is uh, due to capitalism. So if we address the real heart of, uh, of, uh, of the problem, which is exploitation, then we will solve also the other problems. So there is a, a clear hierarchy of uh, oppression and exploitation. So first, the contradiction between labor and capital, and then uh, race, then gender, then uh, in the last uh, years also sexuality, but with some headaches, uh, and so on and so on. Um, now, um, in the last five minutes, I would like to try to give uh, um, two brief answers to, this, uh, uh, to these two um, main arguments. The first, uh, unity is not a fetish, uh, and it's not a static thing. It, it, unity is actually should be th thought as a process, which means it is all. Of course, it's true that we all, maybe in this room, we all suffer from exploitation. Um, we all suffer from alienation, uh, relations of power, and so on. But the experience 
our concrete experience, the way we, we concretely experience exploitation, alienation and domination in our everyday life uh, is not the same. Uh, is, not only is not the same, but also gives birth to a differential access to rights and uh, benefits, or uh, somebody um, likes to use the word uh, privileges, which is a word I don't like so much, but uh, uh, it's true that there, is, there are differential uh, situation, uh, situations even within the class. So if we really want to reach a unity of the struggle or a unity of intent, a political unity, uh, this must be done uh, by thinking that uh, uh, we need to start from the presupposition that uh, there is a difference of experiences, uh, we are not situated in the same way, and a unity is a process uh, which requires an, an extremely difficult and complicated work that implies also the recognition that conflicts are not just the conflicts between uh, our group our movement and the external enemy, but uh, conflicts are constantly present even within our groups and our movements. And we shouldn't be afraid of this. It doesn't mean that we should uh, always look for fights, um, mm -hmm. but we should be uh, aware of the fact that uh, even among us who share a, maybe a political project, uh, the, the <coughs> idea of uh, defeating capitalism and so on, there can be conflicts which are not just ideological and cultural conflicts, uh, but which are rooted in a, a different uh, uh, situation in different position within uh, the relations of exploitation and oppression. So the problem is uh, how to address this. And in my political experience, uh, one of the, of the ways I found, which is not the solution to all evils, is to allow the autonomous organization of oppressed people even within uh, mixed political groups. This is not the solution to all evils. It is not the, magical, uh, the magic solution, but at least it allows a process of uh, subjectivation, so a, a, pro a process of protagonism, uh, subject formation within the groups uh, to address these issues in an uh, organizational and political way. The second uh, answer about the hierarchy of exploitation and oppression, um, I think that uh, um, uh, here the mistake is both analytical and, uh, and political. Uh, it lies in the idea that you can uh, explain what capitalism uh, by just, uh, uh, th this is a metaphor I like to use just because I didn't find a better metaphor, but it's uh, as if uh, we wanted to explain uh, the anatomy of the human body by explaining only the earth. Uh, in other words, uh, if I explain how the earth work, works and what this function is, then I have the whole picture. This is of course not true. Uh, if we address only the exploitation um, issue, of course, we are addressing the, what is the engine, the, 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 the driving force of capitalism. But we haven't explained what a capitalist society is. Um, and uh, if we look at the capitalist society as a whole, then we can see, at, the, at, this, at least this is my suggestion, is that, that uh, a capitalist society is a totality of relations of domination, so power, <laughs> um, exploitation, and alienation. It's uh, an articulated and in, in internally differentiated whole. It's a totality of all of these things. And while I do share the idea that uh, capitalism cannot survive without its heart, which is the exploitation, the um, seeking for profit and, and the accumulation of profits, uh, it is also true that uh, um, the conditions for exploitation, the social conditions for exploitation must be reproduced. And here, all forms of oppression race, gender, sexuality, and so on, do play a crucial, important, constitutive role in creating, constantly in creating the conditions for exploiting people. Uh, so from this viewpoint, then it doesn't make any sense to, to, to think about the priority of struggles, because the point is that the struggles against capitalism can arise from every uh, point of the reproduction of the capitalist society, capitalist society. And the point is not so much to uh, indicate with the sort of kind of test book of the perfect uh, revolutionary struggle, what the priorities are, but rather trying to unify these different struggles that arise from these different points of the reproduction of capitalist society. To conclude, because I, I spoke as usual too much, um, Daniel Ben Said in his uh, book on uh, Trotskyism, and I like the fact that he uses the, the plural, and I think we should actually take the habit of, of speaking of Marx, Marxism in the plural and feminism in the plural. Um, he speaks about the bags of exile. I don't know if this is translated like this in, it, in English. The bags of exile. In other words, the point is that uh, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, um, gone through a very long journey. We are not uh, in a very good condition, let's be honest. Uh, 
but at the same time, uh, of course, we want to go on. And the problem is to understand what kind of bugs we are carrying on with us. And uh, this was basically the intent I had with this uh, very tiny, tiny book, which means uh, uh, Sarah was uh, uh, insist emphasizing the fact that there is, uh, for example, a very a new interest in uh, Marxism, uh, Marxist feminism, in a new interest in uh, the critique of political economy, in Marx about uh, problematizing what, uh, what the limits of the Marxist tradition uh, uh, were. I think uh, we are in a situation of weakness, but at the same time, uh, we are probably in a situation in which uh, uh, finally, for maybe we can start choosing the bugs we want to carry with us and the bugs that we want to drop and forget about. Um, and uh, this is uh, what I try to do with the book. And I think uh, it's a very tiny, very small contribution, but I think uh, that exactly this renewal of interest, uh, this new attention, uh, uh, gives us the opportunity to try to do this work together. Thank you.